This is uh, going to be our main topic for the day and the last uh, post for the night. It's going to be on the uh, progression of art from the actual uh, earliest forms to the actually modern art and it's going to show how modern art is complete and utter garbage. And you're going to see basically the actual progression as we go along. Here we start in uh, the Venus of Willendorf, which is twenty, which is somewhere between twenty-five thousand to twenty-eight thousand BC. We can see it's pretty simple; it's pretty simplistic in its form for a sculpture. This is obviously all sculptures what we're looking at right now, and we're just going to look at one painting, which is modern, which is going to be modern art, and you're going to see where it just complete, where it just becomes complete trash. And uh, you can see it's. Still, pretty simple but you can see it actually resembles a form of a female now we go to this next one bust of Nefertiti this is 1345 BC you can see it actually resembles an actual female and it's uh, and is actually something that would actually be considered as a quite uh, elegant piece of art this is still going into this uh, same idea of what most people would most average people out there would consider as art then we go down to uh this next one which uh <clears throat> is 2000 is 210 to uh, 290 210 bc somewhere around there and that's the terracotta army you can actually see quite a few figures out there which is actually quite amazing that they were able to make so many uh in uh, China and uh, even though they look quite si uh, most of them look quite similar it's still quite amazing that they were able to make these make quite a few uh, of these figures along with uh, it was uh, around 8,000 uh, more than 8,000 soldiers 670 horses and 130 chariots and uh, it's quite amazing that they were able to make all of these. And it's actually not one single sculpture, but actually a conglomeration of many, many sculptures together, which is something amazing. And now we go on to the next one, which is uh, uh, Lao Kun uh, and his son, 2nd century BC. And we can see this is something that we considered uh, some uh, class, like your classic Roman type of architecture. And it's something that's very, very, uh, classical in its, in its appearance. And it's what most people consider as like classical art. Here we go on, uh, Number five, it's Michelangelo's David, 1501 to 1504. And it's just a classical piece for all th that have actually had the ability to see it. And it's one of the it's probably one of the most, if not the most arc, uh, iconic pieces of uh, sculptures uh, in the world. It's a uh, basically carved out of a uh, huge block of marble uh, in Carrera, so it would be, be a white Carrera marble, which is a very, very nice marble to work with, being it's going to be very, very uh, a very smooth uh, grain, and it creates uh, a nice uh, visual effect, being that he's able to actually make the actual hair without uh, cracking it over the uh, and having a crack over the years is just something of amazement to me. And as we go down here, we see Gian Lorenzi uh, Bernini, Ecstasy of St. Uh, Teresa. This is uh, another one that's uh, in what I believe is, is another white marble as well. And it's It'd be more of a uh, biblical uh, sculpture. 
as opposed to more of the classical type of sculptures you've seen before. And we uh, we see a lot a lot of this uh, idea of the flowing clothes, which is something that I think would be very very difficult to do in marble, especially. And that's 1647 to. Uh, to 1652 AD Antonio uh, Canova Perseus on the head of Medusa this is uh, another one that breaks from that uh, style of biblical stuff and goes to uh, neoclassical style and you can see that it's just uh, Something that uh, most people would uh, would care for is being a very very uh, cla uh, classy style of art. You know, you you see nudity with it; it's still done in a very very classy style or a classical style of art. And then here we have uh, Augusta Rod Rodin. Uh, uh, the Burgers of uh, Calais, 1894 to 1895, and this is commemorating uh, the Hundred Years' War between Britain and France. And I believe that should be in bronze, as far as it looks. Which, if it is, it's it'd be what it'd be something quite different from the previous sculptures that we've seen. As the other ones have been stone. Now, then we're getting into now. Then when we start getting into the 1900s, now we start to get to stuff that's a little bit out of the box, and that's where things start to go downhill. Pablo pa Picasso's guitar now. Pablo Picasso was known for being quite obscure with his uh, art itself with it, but it didn't exactly exchange with a lot of other artists, so he wasn't exactly uh, influential at his own time, but he could have been influential with some of the more modern artists, so that's why you're seeing uh, such pieces like this. Uh, Constantine Brancusi's uh, Mil uh, Pagani, 1913. This is uh, uh, a Romanian artist, and they call him a proto minimalist, which I'd say you're starting to see where it's starting to change, where you're starting to see things that are uh, not as much in that actual trying to uh, represent something that's actually there and you're getting away from actual real function in the actual art and this is a little bit just starting to get to a little bit disturbing thing of art and not actually painting what's there or actually sculpting what's there now we're getting into some horrible stupid stuff uh do jump uh bicycle wheel in 1913 now this is this garbage this is basically taking two pieces of trash basically you're taking essentially a ruined uh, bar stool and an unusable bicycle wheel and putting them together and calling it art frankly that's not art that's just garbage if anybody else showed me that, I'd say toss it out in the trash. That would be my first uh, inclination of that. Now we see Andy Warhol. This is another moron. Basically, he makes a giant copy of a Brillo pad box, and they're calling it art. Frankly... He was known to copy also things like Campbell's Soup and Heinz Ketchup and uh, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Frankly, 
the actually uh, doing this stuff is not art. You're actually just copying things and uh, and it's frankly you're not actually doing anything. You're you're just making a larger facsimile thereof. And it's not art. It's just basically it looks like basically someone basically left a a large uh, box there f uh, for that product on the actual shelf. I mean, if you saw that there, anybody saw that there, they wouldn't call that art. Art is actually uh, making something that uh, represents represents something that's actually something of a realistic sculpture. It's painting of a scenery that actually means something. It's not just a bunch of garbage put together. This is Donald Judd, Untitled uh, Stack, 1967. We call those shelves. That's all we call those. That's garbage. It's saying he's synonymous with minimal art. Yeah. Why don't he just be a, uh, a, a cabinet designer for a company? He could, uh, instead of uh, coming up with this garbage. Because frankly, this is just a bunch of shelves. If I put a bunch of shelves on a wall, they don't call me an artist. They just say I put a bunch of shelves on a wall. If someone if someone did this in the room, put a bunch of shelves like this, they would not say that they're a genius. They say they put the shelves too close together that you can't put much in, in between uh, each shelf. That's it. Yokoi uh, uh, Kusama, accumulation number one. I don't even know what they were going after with this. It looks kind of like some type of coral thing, but you can't even tell. It just looks like basically some kid was playing with Play-Doh. Uh, there was like gray, and they just stuck it all together, and that that that's it. I'm sorry with I'm sorry but a 6-year-old could probably do a 5 or 6-year-old could probably do a much better job. This is just This is just garbage. And frankly we know, we know this is garbage. This goes back to 1962. And and it says she deals with minimalism and performance art. Well, this is garbage. It was uh, rooted in hallucinations and OCD. Well, I have OCD myself. I don't have hallucinations because I don't do drugs. But the fact is, is I have OCD. But the fact is, is I can tell you that, that is not anything but garbage. Ava, Ava has hang up. Okay. It's a wire frame. You could tell it's a wireframe, nothing more. It's missing a photo or missing a picture. Yeah, guess what? And why are they putting up putting up? Because she was a Jew who fled Nazi Germany. So they basically feel, oh, she must have meant something with that. Yeah. Guess what? It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Just because uh, what you lived through doesn't mean that you basically deserved uh to be considered as an artist or anything like that. It doesn't mean anything. Actually produce something first and then we'll come back to you. They consider her as post-minimalism through arguably a feminist prism. I don't see any of that garbage. I see a frame with a frame with two wires. To hang it up, uh hang it up and it's probably gonna hang up in, improperly. Yeah, it's garbage. Richard Serra, uh, one ton pr uh, prop, House of Cards. Yeah, it's an it's an uh, improperly put together box. That's it. It's all it is, nothing more. You know, we call that garbage. Toss it in the garbage and do it right next time. Robert Smith, uh, Smithson Spiral Jetty. 
Yeah, this is when art started revolts against the uh, commercialism of the gallery world. Ooh. And radically come with new forms of earthworks. Basically what it means is he did stuff out in the actual world and actually tried to make uh, forms. What that is is just like a little spiral. Guess what? They've been doing that actually uh, around the uh, globe for thousands upon thousands of years. You know what that makes him? A copycat. And they've been actually making uh, more interesting actual forms for thousands of years, so essentially he can't even get that one right. If you go out to uh, countries like Peru, you're, you're actually going to see that. Lou uh, Bourgeois uh, Spider, 1996. Yeah, that looks like garbage. That's another person. What was his actual purpose of doing so? Uh, Louise Bourgeois was already in her uh, 80s when she when she made that. Yeah, well, guess what? It was already garbage. It's it's basically I guarantee you she was probably having dementia when she made it. Uh, Anash uh, Kapoor uh, Cloudgate 2006. Yeah, this is the one in Chicago in uh, Millennium Park. I've seen uh, this uh, one many a time uh, when I've been in Chicago. And it's basically, it's an ugly piece of garbage. It initially drew people in because people were wondering what the hell it was. And frankly, it's nothing but a piece of garbage. They can remove the damn thing. It doesn't even belong there. And then we see this number 20, uh, Rachel Harrison, Alexander the Great, 2007. I mean, what the hell is this? You see some woman in a cape and God knows what, uh, there's like a m mannequin puking into a popcorn bucket of Jeff Gordon on some like painted rock that looks like it's painted like an Easter egg. Um, that just looks like garbage. Or someone that painted it that was probably high on some type of drug. So what we see with it is we see just a complete and utter dismantling of what art was. And it didn't take uh, anything and it's been going on for about a century and this is the whole problem and we can con continue with this by looking at this recent uh, selling of this one art piece that sold uh, in 2013 this piece right here now you're not looking at some type of uh, ping pong uh, table which you probably would think you would be, you're actually looking at a canvas that's painted blue on both sides with one white line painted in the center. Its price, 43.8 million. You can pay any painter <laughs> in your whole town to do this and they will probably do it for $10. if not maybe twenty dollars at most how much would a canvas at that size cost maybe uh, maybe fifty maybe sixty bucks maybe as much as a hundred bucks with it depending so we're talking you're talking less than a couple hundred bucks at most and we're talking we got an idiot who spent nearly $44 million and it was uh, this and it was I'd have to give some credit to uh, Barnett Newman the actual painter who was actually able to sucker people uh, including Paul Allen who's a complete and idiot for Microsoft who was a previous owner
and whoever the current one is um which it doesn't currently state is they're basically uh which i would assume that they wouldn't want to state because that would be embarrassing to uh to be named as the person who owned this owned the owns this piece of garbage because the fact is that I wouldn't want to be actually known as this and this artist uh, mentions uh, Mark Rothko uh, Jackson Pollock and Frank Stella as his uh, uh, people who uh, inspire him I don't know why he doesn't uh, had Bernie Madoff on that list because that should be the number one person who should have inspired him because this is one big scam job. I've never seen uh, as much of a scam job because there's nothing going on in the painting. You paint both sides blue, you put some uh, painter's tape in the middle and then uh, and then under that painter's tape, you make sure it's white. If not, you basically pretty much, if, as long as there's a white stripe in the middle, it's large enough. And if it's to your liking, you probably leave it like that. And boom, you send it right out. And you could probably get the thing done in, in pretty much like 20 minutes. And it shows you how much garbage you're putting out today. Does this mean that we have, all that all the art is garbage? No. There's a lot of underground people who actually can produce some good stuff. I mean, there's people out there who actually have artistic talent, but who just aren't mainstream artists selling garbage like this. And what's being showcased in these uh, art studios is not going to be their art because they want to showcase a bicycle wheel on a uh, bar stool a box of Brillo pads, shelving, a, a frame with a wire coming out of it, a, wrong, a wrongly put together box, and things like a, a basically horrible sculptures like this spider or, or the that bean outside of uh, Millennium Park or god awful things like this whatever the hell you want to call it and that's what they're doing so uh, and so basically unless we actually return to real art of making things that actually look like they are this is what we're expecting to get now if you like this like subscribe click the notification bell uh, share this all the right way around uh, social media and uh, tell your friends about my podcast and uh, get them to subscribe and I will see you guys tomorrow.